Hey, this is Matt. And today we are going to be looking at this image and I'm going to share how I achieved this motion effect. Last week I had posted this image of Boba Fett and the Tusken Raider on a speeder bike. And I got a few comments asking how I did the effect. So that's what I wanted to cover is just adding this motion to your photos. Is this the only way to do it? No. Is this the best way to do it? Probably not. This is just how I did it. And I feel like it's a very easy, beginner friendly, transferable to other programs process. So if you like the way it looks, let's see how I did it. For all my photos, I do edit in Photoshop. And once again, some of these things can be transferable to other programs because some, you know, some of the photo editing things and tools are the same. So one of the things we're going to look at first, here's the image. I did edit the raw image and so it's and I, and I removed some of the stand or the the wire that I had on there and then I blasted some some dirt. This was the raw image before or not raw but the edited image. Then I just removed the air blaster and the wire. So that's what we got. One thing right away that is that I recommend if you can do it is practical effects. So this is where some people like some people swear by practical effects and like Photoshop's the most evil thing ever. And like, you can't get anything Photoshopped is fake. Like I'm, I don't, I don't believe that. Like if that, if that's you, then like, that's fine. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with you. And then you have some people that just do a hundred percent Photoshop. You just have a base image and then you Photoshop the figure onto a, like another digital image. And, and then you just add tons of effects and, and make the lighting dramatic and, and that's cool too. That's and that's another form of art. So I'm not going to say you have to do one way or the other, or one way is right, one way is wrong. Uh, I I like mixing both. So for this, like one thing that really sells the effect is going to be the practical effect that I did with blasting the dirt. Real quick, looking at the shot setup, I have Wolverine here in my front yard at a different spot. I soften the dirt a little bit, and you can see if I don't soften the dirt. It looks like this and like it's not blowing anything because it's hard. And so if I do soften, breaking it up, break it up a little bit and then just blast it, you can see it gets it gives us that cloud, that that dust. And so this is a this can be a different effect from using the drain blaster, which is more of an explosion. And I mean, it, it kind of comes out like that on this shot, actually. But you can see the like the sun's up there, the sun's lighting down, and it's just, uh, I have the, the these rock walls there that I wanted him to kind of be breaking through, but I didn't really care for him to do that. That's the setup for the shots, and that's the practical effect that we already have. I, I shot like a few different ones. This one, I, like I really liked how it came out because of the way the blast is, it already looks like it's coming out, like he just broke through. So that's the, the practical. So we're gonna add to that practical. And one of the things that I want to look at real quick, uh, I'm going to make a new layer. So I do have these like dust brush, not dust brushes, these dust overlays that I got from, I, I forgot where, where I got them from. If I can remember, I'll like tag it. Uh, but you can Google dust and I'm, you, I'm sure you'll find stuff like this. So I'm just going to put this here. We're going to look at what these different blurs do. As you can see, when you go to filter and then blur, like there's a ton here and then there's blur gallery, which is there's more blur. There might be like some other one where you can like blur and motion, add motion to it. But I'm going to show you the three most common ones that I use, especially for this effect and, and just look at what they do real quick. So once again, this isn't the only way to do it. And there might be a better way. Like I know there for blur gallery, there's like a, a good spin blur for another effect, the path blur, like you can control where it's blurring. Um, I think it's field blur or it might be like another filter that, you know, you can control like the depth of the blur, which is good for, for certain backgrounds and stuff. But anyway, like we're not doing that. This is very simple, very beginner friendly, just to kind of, you know, get this effect. And then you can kind of explore some of these other options. Looking at this first one, which is the most common, is the Gaussian blur. So this one, all you, all you can control is going to be the amount with how much it blurs. So and this is the one that I use for my lightsabers. If you've, if you've seen that tutorial, I like you just make a white line and then you're adding layers of different blur. So I'm adding this Gaussian blur and you can see like the more you blur, because it's like, 
when you blur something, it's it kind of expands it. Like it, it's stretching it out almost. Like to a certain point with these dots, with this dust, you can't really see anything there. So after 26, you can kind of see some of the bigger pieces of dust and then it, they kind of come back. So I like to use this. I like to use this effect a lot when it comes to adding some of these effects. We're not going to add dust to this shot, but if I like almost like any effect that I do add, I do add, even if it's just like one pixel or two pixels of blur, like I'll add it. And depending on what it is or the direction, like if it's super close and I want it like, you know, out of focus, I'll blur it more. If it's really in the far in the back or a part of the background, I'll blur it. Uh, if, if a shot like I want to add like just like a spot of blur, I'll kind of use this and then like mask it out. So that's Gaussian blur. Another one that I use a lot is going to be motion blur. So this one is like very common. And I think it's also kind of like a, a mistake for, for certain shots. And I'm not saying I'm the master of it. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like I'm, I'm sure I'll get people correcting me already, but this is just going to be very like straight lines. For, for some things that works, for some things that's gonna be like perfect. That's what you want. Here, you can control the distance, which is like the same thing, how strong it is, but you can also control the angle which with, with which it, like it moves. So here adding like 100, 100 pixels uh, and then changing the direction, you can see like that it's changing the dust to, to give it that motion. The limit to this is that it's only going one direction. So if I'm doing an explosion like this, I have some pieces going over here, some pieces going over here, some pieces going up. So if I just apply this motion blur, like it's like all the stuff's over here, it's just gonna go kind of like one direction. It's not gonna be like perfect. That's why motion blur isn't the ultimate motion blur, depending on what you're trying to do. Cancel that. So the last one, which is the one that we're gonna use is radial blur. And so this one's really cool. It has two different blur methods. And also, once again, you can control the amount. And we'll do a little high like. And so this one has spin. So it's going to spin whatever you're bl uh, blurring. And then it has a zoom, which is going to be kind of like, we'll see in a second, the hyperspace effect. And then the quality. I'm not too sure of like the difference in the quality as far as what the actual difference is. I usually just have it on good. So first we'll look at spin at 35 and we'll see what it does. Okay, so that's spun. It spun the, the black layer also. So let me see. So the other ones had a preview that you could see. These dots are a little tricky. Okay, so I'm sure you can see that. So it's taking the image and it's it's just spinning it. It, it it's making like a spiral almost that's a cool effect for for adding some motion depending on on what you're doing oh you can kind of zoom in that works a little better too so you can see it's creating that tunnel it's almost 3d so yeah this is this is definitely a cool effect but it's not what we're going to be using for this shot and so what we are let's undo that is going to be using the radial blur, but we're going to be checking out the zoom effect. So let's see what zoom does. Uh, let's just keep it at 10. Well, also, before I do that, we can look at this little chart right here. You can move this so you can see based off of your layer, the layer that you have selected, you can control kind of like where do you want the, the center to be. So you can see these lines and you can see how like this is the center right here. And if you look closely, you can see like this one is is opening up a little bit that direction. And then the, the farther it goes, the bigger those lines, those dots become because it's it's exploding out and it's stretching out. So you can kind of move it around to see like how you want to position it based off of your layer. We'll just keep it like in the center and add that 10. So you can see how like this is the center of the image and there might be like a little blur, but not really. It slowly starts adding a bigger motion blur to the outside of the image. So this is what we're going to be using. And by the way, when you use a black like overlay like this, random trick is you just use screen and then it, it hides all the black. And so you're left with like whatever is on the the overlay. We're not going to be using this. Delete that. 
And so there's different ways of doing this. I'm just gonna show you how I did it for this image because you can isolate Wolverine, the subject, and then just do the background by itself. I wasn't being, that, that's gonna give a cleaner result. I wasn't being too nitpicky with that. So I'm gonna make a copy of this and then I'm going to add, like we're just gonna jump into it. Let's do 20. And so once again, this is where I have, because I have the practical effects, I don't have to worry about adding extra effects. The stuff, the dust, the dirt, the specks, they're already there. So if you don't have that, you know, then you can add like a dust brush or the dust overlay, and then you can kind of go from there. But for here, I'm just gonna work with the image that I have. So let's add 20 blur to that. So this is kind of like a cool effect on its own, right? Like I can see this, you know, working for, for uh, like a comic book or something, but for a cool looking photo that I want to post of Wolverine jumping at the viewer, it, like he's out of focus, right? Like maybe his teeth or not even his teeth are in focus. So I don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a mask and then with our brush tool selected and then the black color, uh, soft, uh, it can just be 35. I usually don't like to mask out at 100, you know, just kind of adding on to it uh, just to make it a little softer and better. So we're going to start with his face because I know for sure I want his face in focus. And then kind of go around his arm, hands, shoulders, knees and toes. And so you can see there, let me go back. Like you have to be kind of careful with this because it, it, it can be a cool effect if you're going for that. But here, like if I kind of like, oh yeah, let me, let me get this. Like it might look a little weird because his like second arm coming out, but like, I don't want that. I don't want for this, for this shot. I don't want that. And getting rid of that. And so for this shot, I did keep a little bit of his leg in in motion. Kind of like that, I think, which I like. It comes down to preference. And for certain things too, you have to be, you have to be mindful of what else is in your image. So do I want this rock, like this whole rock coming out? Is that gonna look weird? Like it, it, it could work because like you can say that he's like pushing it. Yeah, maybe like just the front kind of, it's out of focus anyway, but you know, I can kind of blur that side. Uh, maybe some of the stuff at the bottom, it's, it's a little too hot. I'm gonna lower this flow to like 15. So you can kind of like bring back some of the detail. And I think this one's actually, I might've done the other image at a little less like intensity for the sake of this example. I like that, you know, it's more visible. So remember the rocks are already flying. Like you can see these rocks going, some rocks going this way, some rocks going that way. Like it, it already has that cool effect, but then we're just adding this outward effect. Like I said, this one's kind of intense, but that's one thing that I want to stress is like, I, I feel like I've said this a lot for other videos, like a little goes a long way. You don't want it to be like, you know, Wolverine's going through hyperspace. So let's do like 70. Blur around this, yada, yada, yada. So once again, like I feel like I'm, I'm repeating myself. That's kind of a cool effect too, if you're going for that. I could see myself posting some pictures like this. Uh, you know, this is, this is one where I would clean it up better, like kind of like select him and then just do it to the background, just kind of giving texture. It's not really like a, a real shot, like a real shot, right? But that's not what I was going for. So anyway, going back to the point is less is more. So just add a little blur, especially if you already have like the, the, like the practical effect, you don't wanna make it super streaky and like I said, hyperspace. Like you just wanna add a little bit. So looking at the final image, so after doing some color editing, I shifted it, like I, I rotated it and, and zoomed in some. Like this is the final image that I got. You can, it's still the same rocks. It's still the same motion. Like to me, it's not overdone. So once again, I'm sure someone can look at it and be like, I think that's overdone. Okay, that's cool. But for me, it's not. Like I like that it's, 
it keeps like the naturalness of it but it just it's just adding like for the for photoshop besides this color and lighting adjustments like the blur is just adding that little bit of touch to stretch that of that practical effect just a little more just to make it look a little cooler and remember this is just, this is just an example like every image is different every scene is different i just wanted to show you these big three blurs that i do use to add motion to my shots and just a friendly reminder to like use them wisely and sparingly and carefully. So that's pretty much it for that zoom. Like another one that I want to look at real quick. I just did this shot uh, yesterday, actually. I wasn't planning on doing the tutorial over it, but I thought it might work also. Just a quick example of adding the dust. So I didn't add any, I didn't add any practical effects. I made these like saber swooshes. And then I added this dust and smoke from my smoke pack, my smoke brush pack, if you want to check that out. Same little, little spice. But then with the dust, it was like one of the same images, one of the same overlays that I used as the example before. So I did blur it, you can see here, because it's a smart layer, I blurred it 1.9. And so it just adds like a little bit. And so with the saber, which like I said, is also just the white line that I blurred and, and gave it that glow effect. Cause I have a lightsaber tutorial and I have a glow, like an effect tutorial that use the Gaussian blur and show you how to, to make things glow. If you want to check that out. But like one thing I was kind of messing around with because I did want to add that motion. Like I did have some, I did try to do some motion blur on this. So you can see it on this top left one. So if I did do that, like it does kind of look cool, I would probably erase or like mask out the top stuff because she hasn't gotten there yet. So the dust is behind and it might not even look like dust. Like maybe it's just like part of the light rays from the saber, like that swoosh effect. And then another one that I was messing around with was the radial, but not the zoom. I kind of wanted to try the spin. I mean, that's why I didn't really do this. Now you could see how it could kind of work like I have the center over here because that's where the the layer is. But like, once again, I would kind of cut this out, but I didn't really like how that looked. And so I didn't want to, I didn't want to force that part of it because I did want to add the, those other swooshes, which I was kind of being, I was trying to be dramatic about it. Like I, I wanted it looking a little out there. I'm okay with how the, the swooshes look. And I, I've gotten a few people asking about them. So I might do a tutorial over the, the lightsaber swoosh later, but, but yeah, for the dust, I like that the lightsaber is just kind of lighting it. That's like the, the brightest parts of the image. Like you're going to see the little dust particles like from the light. So I chose to not add any more of that like motion effect. I probably still could, it probably might still look good, but I just, you know, it was just my choice to not do that. If you do try that zoom effect using some of the blur features that we looked at, tag me. And if you post it, tag me, let me know. So hopefully this helps create and inspire. <laughs>